Hi there, it's one for the Commodore Amiga guys. Um, it's a manually assembled floppy disk drive interface made of uh, pure 100% logic chips based on an Aminet project by Bruce Abbott in 1995. There's a bit of a personal story behind this project. I first downloaded it about 20 years ago with a dial-up modem such as this one. And the file would have been downloaded from a bulletin board service over the phone on a setup similar to this. Not exactly, it was probably a couple of years before this. I can't quite remember now why I didn't make it. It would have been great to have it at the time. Uh, these images are from the original file downloaded from Aminet and displayed on an Amiga. So that's uh, the low quality there. I don't know how he scanned these in, but he didn't mind cutting his case back then. The author is suggesting two alternate installation options, the first being an internal drive and the second being an external drive connector mounted on the uh, rear expansion port cover. The interface supports up to four floppy disk drives if connected externally and if there's enough power uh, to run all four, which would require an external power supply. There's a PCB image and an overlay image and also this uh, installation image all included within the package and uh, the board is intended to sit over the ROM uh, socket and piggyback to it and it gets most of its signals from there. Some signals are taken from the motherboard behind the expansion connector and some more from a test point near the expansion connector. I'll be going about this a little differently and taking all signals from the expansion connector. This is all going to be dead bugged on proto board so I'm starting from here. Now just a warning, there's no result at the end of this video, it's just an introduction. But with the chips placed, you can already see that there's uh, more chips to my design than the original. It's actually 10 chips versus 7 for the original, and that's all because I'm avoiding the use of the 74LS541 integrated circuit that isn't as available uh, in my location in Australia and I've opted to use chips that are all available at JCAR, which is a local retail outlet. So I'm going to reproduce that circuit, um, substituting the LS541 mainly with an LS240. Now this is the convoluted mess I've done to replace the 74LS541. I've used 74LS240, a pair of LS04, that's uh, hex inverters, and one LS08, which is a quad AND gate. It's not that I can't get the LS541, but I'm impatient, and I also like the idea of being able to walk into my local electronics retailer in 2017 and get all the parts you need to make a floppy drive interface for an Amiga. As you can see in the bottom left of this image, there's a blank footprint for a chip, and I failed in my endeavor. I can't source or replace an LS03 in a hurry. At this stage I'm aiming to complete all connections between chips and I'm marking off those connections on a schematic diagram. Speaking of schematic diagrams, it's about time I showed you the one included in the package, bearing in mind that mine won't be exactly the same now. In the next images, I've aimed to complete all of the bits in the address bus. For the original project, most of these wires would have been connected to the Kickstart ROM socket. Here we have all of the data bus bits connected. And now all control signals that are connected to the CD32 have been let out to the expansion connector. I've got a spare SX1 foldback connector and I'm hoping to be able to retrieve two of these expansion port connectors. Uh, I might destroy the third in uh, retrieving two of them. Here's the printed schematic where I've been marking off my work and I'm up to connecting the floppy drive interface now. I've been recording the pinouts of the connectors that I've been making on a piece of paper as well. The floppy drive interface original project is a little bit more comprehensive than it would have to be to run a GoTech, uh, which is my intention. Uh, this is my third GoTech now, which I've already started hacking up for parts. I've never successfully programmed one, so I'm gonna have to sort that out. To create a floppy disk drive connector, I've just referred straight to the Amiga A500 manual. And this is where it's at right now. Uh, we have a floppy disk port, and I'm still missing the 74LSO3. I've completed the board before the sellers even sent them. The footprint is wired up though, so this is tentatively complete. I've got another printed schematic to do the checking. 
this will be an ongoing project. There's a lot to come together before I can complete and test this board. I've yet to get hold of a GoTech floppy drive emulator that's flashed for use with the Amiga. There's a lot of testing to do and checking before I plug it into an Amiga. It looks like I've successfully salvaged one of the expansion connectors. I've lost some pins, but I don't think there are actually any that the interface uses. It doesn't use all of the upper bits of the address bus. I've got some ribbon cables to make up next. Now the ultimate goal for this would be for it to work first time, um, but failing that and failing being able to fix it before I break it, I am planning either way uh, on reproducing the PCB overlay that was included in the package as well. I have made a couple of PCBs with ferric chloride and resist pen, but I really would like to try the photosensitive resist PCBs and use that method. So I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, stay tuned for part two. I think the uh, videos in this series will be sparse, but they'll happen. Whoops. LS240, not 340.